Over the past year, I've been posting and holding video groups about countering the danger of Madhu splitting, confusing, and angering devotees. Following is a brief third clip of my October 6th video conversation with Professor Anil Kumar, in which he speaks about the dangers of following Madhu and that our conviction to counter Madhu is weakened because of losing sight of Swami's teaching. In following posts, we will cover the harmful consequences of following Madhu and current countering efforts. The third clip. I've heard you say, Anil, that um, Swami is teaching detachment and self-realization. Uh, this sometimes means uh, the destruction of ego. It's not an easy path. Uh, this path is tricky, and it needs a great master to teach it. Uh, and uh, uh, by following someone with ego, uh, this is not the path of self-realization uh, or the destruction of ego. It can be highly dangerous because it, it brings us even more uh, into the world, even more attached to that that brings us suffering. I've heard you talk like that. You, you are right. One has to develop this detachment that we should be free from ego and therefore will not be attracted by that ego in the form of Madhu. Yes. Uh, and uh, if we do get more attached to the world by following Madhu, how serious is that? What can, where can Madhu lead us? We know that one of the key factors is the asking for money. This is a, uh, one of the key signs that ego is involved. Uh, but there are, more, there are darker sides also uh, to following somebody who wants uh, to be adored, who wants power. There are some dark sides, like uh, in the West here, uh, Jones, who led people to taking a poison and suiciding. There are many kind of dark, attractive, uh, false teachers. Is th can this be a major problem in following someone with ego when we don't understand all the dark side of that ego? Correct. So the response now there are two points here. The first point is. Let me not be attracted towards all that he does there, all the gimmicks and the magics and that imitation, or we should not be carried away by such things. Number two, I should be free from ego so that I will be away from that ego. So the mistake lies with me first. I should cleanse myself so that I would not be attracted there. Let's say uh, we want to be without ego. Does that mean that we do not fight for Dharma or that we do not counter Madhu? Or do we, is there a part of us that has to fight this? A part of us that has to counter it? Is a point, is a point what you raised, Doctor. Well, my answer is this. While fighting for Dharma, ego is lost gradually. Something like a ripe fruit that falls from the tree. When the fruit is ripe, it falls automatically. Like that, when we fight for dharma, ego drops on its own. Is that, is that why uh, one should encourage uh, devotees to take to this uh, dharmic path of fighting a dharma? Is it the devotee's position to protect Swami's teaching and that they should resist in some way 
Everybody has a different way of resisting, but they should resist in some way uh, a dharma. Is it our responsibility? Is it our duty to do that? Or should we forget it and just let it be? No. To forget it like that is a blunder. It is a sin. It is betrayal to Swami. Let's not do that. We should go on fighting against this false city, fighting against this falsehood. But we should know what is dharma, what is adharma. Dharma we should know clearly as explained by Baba. We should be convinced after this stage of getting convinced, we should get to the next stage of developing conviction. Out of this conviction, we'll be able to spread dharma in others. We are not able to spread this dharma because we lack conviction. We lack conviction because we are not convinced. We are not convinced because we have our own knowledge of his teachings. Following posts will cover what teachings we have forgotten and the enormous grace of a Sai relationship. Bye-bye.